Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Um, here's the video I promised on tips on building planes. So we're starting with this one, which is designed by a friend who shall not be named, um, who is a beginner. Yeah, so at first it looks all right with the indicators, because as you can see, the center of thrust is pointing at the center of mass, which is also forward and straight, and it just works. Uh, the center of lift is slightly behind the center of mass, which is about right. Actually, I'd like it a little further back, but that's all right. Um, you know, it looks good at first. But then if you look at the plane itself, you notice that we're using these low atmosphere engines along with some of these high ones. And uh, overall, it looks like there's too much thrust on the bottom. And also, like, when you go up, there will be too much thrust on the top, because only these three engines will be active. Um, so, uh, let's show you how this flies. Okay, so, precision controls on, throttle up, and... Ah, oh crap. Hold on. Uh... I forgot the staging screwy on this thing, um, so I'm rearranging the staging so I can activate all the engines without decoupling anything. So yeah, now we have all the engines running, and whoa, it takes off really easily, and it's flying almost stable, except now it's trying to pull up. And if I'm just, I'm not touching the controls, and it's just slowly pulling itself up, which is not too bad but it's kind of annoying and then also it's very easy to uh, stall as you can see right here I have now lost control of the vehicle and it's spinning I'm gonna try to recover from this but I'm not sure I can actually I, mm, too, I'm too low to recover from it wait no might might recover might not Okay, pull up, pull up. Yeah, I actually recovered from that, but that was kind of annoying to recover from, and it's very bad when you have a plane that can just uh, instantly, uh, oops, turned off precision controls, can just instantly flip you out of control. That's it's a bad thing to have. So, let's disconnect that, watch everything explode, and uh, go back to the SPH. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of these low atmosphere engines because they aren't going to do us any good once we go higher up. Let's uh, replace them with high atmosphere engines. So all the engines are the same time, except now we have an imbalance. There's one extra engine on the bottom. Let's get rid of it. Um, let's move these two engines into this stage so that it launches properly, and let's go launch it. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Everything's all set up. We're ready to go. I'm pulling up. It better take off. It's gonna be annoying if it don't take off, of course. And it takes off easily. See, this is this is good. And it's pretty stable. Um, the only problem is it's still... Watch this. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it to do this. Yep, see, I've just stalled it. We're flipping. We're out of control. Uh, let me see if I can get this right, and we are now trying to recover. Um, which may or may not end up well. Oh dear! Ah, come on! Yeah, there we go. Yeah, but uh, a little unstable. Uh, also, you can't really turn side... Oh, you can turn pretty decently, surprisingly. Huh. Well, let's go back to the SPH again. Now, looking at the indicators, we want this thing to be more stable. Um, well, more wings means more stability if the center of lift is in a good place. Um, this is where I was talking about how I'd like the center of lift to be further back. Also, um, these tail connectors, if you've ever tried to connect one before and had trouble, you might have noticed it just kind of flops around here. Let me turn on snap to angles, and it kind of just goes all over the place and doesn't quite want to connect. 
you, you see what I mean? Yeah, um, which is very annoying. And let me show you how to take care of that real fast. You basically got to put it on sideways. And now, it, now it's trying to connect up there for some reason. Uh, sometimes things are a bit screwy like that. Basically, okay, do you see it at the top of the screen in the top center? It's trying to connect the piece way over there, even though I'm over here. Which is kind of annoying. Like, the piece isn't even... It's... Look, it's way over there. It's not even... I can't... I don't know why it glitches out like this sometimes, but it does. Luckily, I have a version of this saved where we already made this modification, so I'm going to load that. So, if you look at this version, um, we added fuel lines. That was, um, I don't know, I think that was, uh, my friend did that, because he actually made this version after I told him to put a tailpiece on the back. And so basically this is his, his design. So you see the center of lift has been moved back, and that's all we've done. There aren't control surfaces on the back. There's, it's just a, it's for stability. Okay, well this is awkward. The stage button just turned green. The physics were enabled, but the stage button was red, and I had no idea why I was doing that. Anyhow, we need to restage these engines down here again, because they're up top again. Also, he might have changed the way the landing gear are slightly to put them... No, it doesn't look like it. Never mind. I thought I saw something there different, but it wasn't. Anyhow, here we go, we're gonna take off, it's gonna take off eventually. I'm just waiting for it to take off, and there we go. Try to avoid a tail strike, because tail strikes are bad. But anyhow, this is pretty maneuverable. Funky looking thing, pretty maneuverable. I'm gonna turn down the throttle, I'm gonna bring it low to the ground. This is probably a very, very bad idea, um, because I'm used to flying lighter planes with that, aka more wings, less engines. All my planes can pull up faster than that one and don't fall as fast as that one. So yeah, that's my excuse for crashing it. Okay, now that we've shown you that one, let me show you something that's a little stranger, although it may look familiar, um, that still works. So, it looks like a shuttle, and but that's not enough when you're talking about designing something. It has to actually work properly. So, let's look at the center of lift, the center of thrust, and the center of mass. Um, now, the first thing that you might have noticed that's a bit strange is the angle of the engines and the fact that there are only two of them and they're angled down. Why would you ever want to angle an engine down? Anyhow, um, this is an attempt to replicate the Buran shuttle, the Russian shuttle basically, only different. Um, that's why it only has these two small engines on it. Anyhow, we got an RCS tank on the back, some RCS thrusters cleverly hidden under the underside, and up in front of the wings. I basically put them where I put them because I didn't want them thrusting into anything. So where they are, they're clear of thrusting into any parts. Even though it has no difference in the physics engine of KSP, I like things to be somewhat more realistic. Also, okay, the thing with the weird angle of thrust. If you look, it's almost pointing straight at the center of mass, almost. It's actually a little above it, which is unfortunate and not what I was trying to do. Um, but it's very hard to adjust these and get a good look at where it's pointing. So this is the closest I could get, especially because these don't want to place the way I've placed them. They're on there a little bit awkwardly. But anyhow, this thing flies reasonably well. and. Uh, if you look, the center of lift, the center of lift could actually be a little farther forward and it would like it um, more, but it's all right. I added some, I was originally only gonna have uh, four flaps back here, but then I added these uh, other two. But um, here, let me show you. So this thing can take off and fly under its own power, although it's a little bit strange. I forget how well it takes off too, so I'm applying some RCS. Oh, 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 okay. 
turning off the RCS, and so you can see this thing will fly under its own power. And if you're in space, it won't quite fly properly because I've just noticed the center of m thrust and center of mast are a bit mast center of mass are a bit off, but it'll fly pretty damn close. Um, now we've run out of fuel. Let me turn off the RCS to show you. It, it can land with a full tank of RCS. At least I'm pretty sure it can. I may be misremembering, but anyhow. So we are now in full glider mode. Um, if we had more weight on this thing, it wouldn't be able to land, probably. Um, then again, it might. I don't know. I haven't run enough tests. Or maybe I have. I don't remember. I have an extremely horrible memory. But anyhow, we're gonna go down. Yeah, just pull down. Actually, this low in the atmosphere, this is a really, really bad idea. But, actually, no, we're doing alright. Um, we might actually land on the runway, even. Uh, I doubt it. We're coming in far too hot to land properly. Then again, you never know. Yeah, here's the problem with uh, coming in this hot. You can't really plan how you're gonna land so well. Ah! And there's an example of landing too hard. The most important thing about your landing speed is the vertical speed. If you look at the indicator right now as it's frozen, um, you can see I was going down at about a 15 degree angle. Um, if you're going really slow, it can take that, but in this case, 76 meters per second, if I'd landed at 10 degrees, I would have been fine. Unfortunately, I was trying to hurry up because I was trying to be a show-off, uh, because I do that.